Thank you for joining us. Are you part of a revolution? Are you a revolutionary? You know, Webster's Dictionary defines revolution as an overthrow or repudiation and thorough replacement of an established government or political system by the people governed. It's a radical and pervasive change in society and the societal structure. And what are revolutionaries? Revolutionary is someone who tends to or promotes a revolution. It's one who brings about a radical and fundamental change in society. You know, years ago, I had the opportunity when we were living in Honduras to sit down with my, one of my best friends there, Alberto, and we were able to sit down and watch the movie, The Motorcycle Diaries. Now, The Motorcycle Diaries, the movie is based off the diaries of Che Guevara and uh, Alberto Granada, his best friend, when they were young Argentinians and they left and took a motorcycle trip up through the western part of South America and their intended destination ultimately was going to be Venezuela. Through that diary and of course in the movie, it portrays Che's transformation as he begins to see the imbalance in the societies and the uh, people that he would interact with between the very rich, the very poor, those who had and those who did not have, and the oppression that came. And as he traveled, there was a transformation that was taking place in him. Ultimately, they ended up at a leper colony on the Amazon River and working with those lepers and giving themselves to try to help them and uh, spent a good portion of that trip just trying to help people. But he was a changed man as he observed all that took place as they traveled. He would go back to Argentina, a changed man. In fact, in his own words, this is what he said. The person who wrote these notes passed away the moment his feet touched Argentine soil again. The person who reorganizes and polishes them, me, is no longer. At least I'm not the person I once was. All this wandering about, our America with a capital A has changed me more than I thought. Of course, you probably know that later on he would become a revolutionary leader, join Fidel Castro in the Cuban Revolution, and ultimately go on to foment revolution in other countries. And regardless of what you think, and obviously I think he went about it the wrong way, he didn't take a Gandhi approach in a very uh, passive and peaceful non-resistant kind of revolution. He was for uh, guns and bombs and many people lost their lives. But regardless of what you think, he saw something that needed to be changed and went about changing it. It was radical, but he sought to bring about change. He gave himself and his life in order to foment and bring about the change that he deeply believed in within his own soul. It ultimately, of course, cost him his life. He was a revolutionary. When we were living there, we used to go to the coffee shop on a regular basis and daily sit up there and meet with people. And we noticed every day that we were there that a lady in the afternoons would come in and she always came in with a young girl who had special needs. She was handicapped. And uh, she would come in and they would always bring crafts and they'd set them up on the table outside and they would work with the crafts. And you know, she just they would just seem to enjoy each other's company so much. After a while, we began to get interested to find out, you know, who she was. And uh, one day we introduced ourselves to her and we came, we were able to find out that this woman uh, was the head of all of the Special Olympics in the country of Honduras. The girl that was with her was her daughter. In fact, her daughter had competed in many of the competitions there and had won many awards. But they would come and bring crafts and they would work on them and you could see the love between them. But we also found out she ran a, a school for special needs children there. Without any funding from the government, she went about trying to raise the support and the funds needed to help take care of those kids. And she was making a difference in the lives of a special group of children and in the families who had those children. She was a revolutionary. What are you giving your life for? You know, Jesus, when he, he came, he truly could have been called the ultimate revolutionary. He came to overturn the systems of the world and the way things were in this world with the truth and the power of his kingdom. He didn't come to introduce a new religion. He didn't come to, you know, just abolish the Jewish religion or to start a new religion called Christianity. 
He came to bring about a transformation and a revolution. He came to bring about a great reconciliation. And all of those who would follow him would become revolutionaries. The kind of revolution that they were going to start was not going to be with guns or bombs or protests, but through the simple obedience of living their lives and following him, laying their lives down in service to others, putting into practice the truths of the kingdom of God. And everywhere that the church of Jesus Christ went, it was either revival or riot. I mean, it was transformation that was coming about. And again, not through people standing up, you know, with placards and marching against anything, but simply living their lives full of the love of God and loving other people. They realized that it was the place to be was not in the boat, but out on the water with the Lord Jesus, living the adventure that he had called them to live. What are you giving your life for today? Do you know that no matter where you are, who you're with, you can be a revolutionary. You can bring about the powerful impact of the kingdom of God where you are. And like the little mustard seed, the kingdom begins to spread and to grow and like leaven and bread begins to permeate all around you. You can have a greater impact than you can even imagine. You don't have to go and stand in front of preach in front of thousands of people to change the world. You can change the world one life at a time, living out the kingdom of God, filled with the love of God and the life of Jesus Christ. What are you laying your life down for? A paycheck, social security, retirement, or are you laying your life down for something bigger than yourself the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, our friend Peter Lord used to say, we practice daily what we really believe and all the rest is just religious talk. I like also how Michael Harden talks about following the kingdom of God. He says, the gospel is simple. Imitate Jesus, renounce violence. Everything else is just commentary. Are you seeking to bring about a radical and pervasive change in your part of the world by introducing people to the king and to his kingdom. Let me challenge you to do that. Spend some time today beholding him who is beholding you and always smiling.